Hey friends, I've got notes here. We're going to do the re a review of the trial of the Chicago 7, originally the Chicago 8, of which uh, Mr. Seals was the leader of the Black Panther, Was uh, there was a mistrial. We'll get to that a little bit later. Um, first, if you want to do me a small favor and hit the like or subscribe button, that would be awesome. It would just help me out a little bit, get the message out, and help my career. So, I watched this movie yesterday, and um, first I wrote down, I had watched this movie before, I wanted to review it again before I spoke about it, because there's a lot of details and facts in there, which I'm not going to get into too many facts. I'm going to talk about the spirit of the movie. And things like that more than anything because I think that facts sometimes obscure the human connection and the human connection is what I'm most interested in here with reviewing these movies. So the feeling that I remember from it the first time I read it um, was the rebelliousness of all of the characters that were on trial and that they were rebels with a cause and um, it seemed they all had like a righteous or a passionate anger. So I have, I believe I have learned, it seems that I have learned um, and that I am experiencing that anger, some people will say that anger is a bad thing and they will stop themselves from feeling anger, which then creates a situation where that person becomes a victim. I see anger as a good thing because it reveals to us something that is bothering us, something that we feel is an injustice, something that we need to change, and we can go deeper. Once we recognize anger, we can go deeper into what it is that is actually making us angry. So it's a useful, it's a very useful emotion. Um, they, there's the saying though, if you mix anger with love, you have passion. And I believe that to be true. I experience that to be true is a better way to say that. <laughs> um, and these men seem to have that, every single one of them. Um, so some things that were going on before this trial. Martin Luther King had just been killed. So uh, obviously anybody that believed in social or was working for social just, justice causes. Martin Luther King being killed was a huge deal, especially to the black community, the African American community. Um, they increased troops from 17,000 to 35,000 in Vietnam, and then from 70, up to 75,000, and then from 75,000 to 125,000. So a lot of people, a lot of young men being sent overseas, none of them the rich, right? Um, they were, these men were charged under the Rat Brown Law, which um, I have heard was a law that was uh, put on the books to control the black population, the African American population. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, maybe some of you can tell me. What they were fighting for, here's the, one of the things that, for me, it's not such a big deal. They were fighting with political ideals. Um, it was a very political movie. I think some of them actually had the social ideals in mind, but there was a lot of political thought put into a lot of this. And um, Abby Hoffman, I believe his name was, actually said they were in a political trial way before, according to the movie anyway, way before they kind of recognized that as a group. The guy, <clears throat> the district attorney, so what were they being, God, I haven't even gotten to the point. <laughs> what were they on trial for? They were on trial because um, the Democratic National Convention was in the city of Chicago. Um, these clubs, there was a club, I don't remember, I think MOPA was one or MOPE, and it was, they wanted to um, end the war in Vietnam. 
so did the Yippies, um, which was there and represented by Abby and his buddy Jace, and I can't remember his name. Um, there were a bunch of people, a bunch of organizations there to protest whoever was being inaugurated into the Democratic National Convention, and they didn't think that it was a big enough change from who they currently had, which I believe was, uh, I don't remember, Linda B. Johnson. <laughs> that came just in the nick of time. Uh, so then the district attorney, so also this was politically motivated, their charges. It wasn't even because, see, there had already been an investigation done, I believe by the FBI, that said that these people did not incite the violence the police did. And I, actually there were multiple investigations, it wasn't just the FBI. And so it had already been decided that these men wouldn't be charged. There was a politician that took offense to something someone else did, and so to punish that person, they decided to arrest these men and bring them to trial and convict them, basically because they wanted to assert authority on the population also and show that who the boss was. Um, that, was a, that was definitely a part of it, and that was discussed in the movie. Uh, so I would say nothing has changed. Um, People say that the political system and that the legal system are getting worse and not better. I would say that nothing has changed. I would say what has changed is that there are people more willing to do something about it. People more willing to admit that the issue is there instead of defending politicians now. And you can see that push and pull in society right now. There's mostly young people actually. Young people, I will say, and people that are not represented well. Uh, for instance, women across all societies. Uh, and I would say um, the Asian population in the United States, the African American population in the United States, maybe the Hispanic population, I'm not sure. But I would say that recent events have helped them to stand up and have more of a voice, which is a good thing. Any population that is oppressed in any way, when they turn to have a voice, that's a beautiful thing. And that's how anger can be used as good. See, if you're a victim, you're not going to have a voice. If you're angry, you can have a voice. I'm not saying that coming at an issue from an area, a place of anger is the right thing, but it's better than being a victim. That I assure you. <clears throat> yeah, it was a law that was never used and created to keep African Americans oppressed. At least, that I read just a small blurb of that. Maybe that's true, maybe that's not. Yeah, it probably is true. <laughs> uh, Bobby Seale was the leader of the Black Pan Panther Party. He was actually the, the one that um, was a mistrial. Oh my God, it's insane what happened. So... First off, the judge was out of his mind. He, I believe, was out of his mind, and many people probably do. I think at one point, 80% of lawyers or judges, maybe one of the two, 80% of his peers uh, said that he was incapable of doing the job uh, with the right mind. And he, he led a terrible trial. And not just that, he was racist and bigoted, and he had Bobby, he wouldn't allow um, Bobby Seals to have representation. His lawyer was in surgery, and he kept denying him representation. He would not allow him to even speak for himself, which the appeal was brought to the court. He, um, because Bobby Seal was, a, was a, a man of integrity, a human of integrity, and a human that re used to not be heard, which I admire him just beautifully for. My God, if we had more humans in this world like that, seriously, um, we would not see the abuses on people that we see. <laughs> I, that's why I'm willing to be hated at every job I go to, because I, when we are not well represented, I will represent myself and therefore basically everyone else. 
Uh, we need more people like that. And that is one of the beautiful things about divine masculine energy. And so anyone that tells you that a man that will stand on his own and nobody can tell him anything is prideful and toxic, that's not necessarily true. Sometimes we stand in ourselves so centered and so deeply that nothing can move us. And that nothing that can move us is one of the qualities of the divine masculine. That's one of the qualities of Shiva, the god of gods. He sits in silence and can't be moved. And that is a quality in men that is actually admirable. And if used in the right way, it can be abused, of course. But if used in the correct way, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm that man. <laughs> Abby Hoffman is the most irreverent man in this movie, at least. He's played beautifully. He's always on point with his integrity. Um, and I love that because, again, we need more men of integrity. We need more people of integrity, period. It excites me. Um, Bobby Seal was given a mistrial, not because he was being tried without representation, though that was the case, but because he was beaten, chained, and gagged. Now the movie shows this as basically one uh, time that he stayed in beaten, chained, and gagged, but he was in court this way four times. Uh, he was gagged and chained uh, like those body chains and chained to the chair. Um, the defense attorney, Richard Schultz, had a blast of consciousness and, according to the movie, and asked that this be a mistrial. And um, So, I think that that was a solid point. That's something that I would like to hit on. I actually believe that racism as a systemic issue not every individual it will end racism but racism as a systemic issue so the system is created purposefully the system that we live under is causes division and there's a we were taught to be racist in many ways um People of color were taught to be uh, victims and victimized in many ways and to be oppressed in many ways. Um, these issues run deep within our society and I'm not going to get into all of that uh, in a deep way, but this is where I'm coming from. So this man could not face the bigotry that was happening in the courtroom so blatantly. Uh, Richard Schultz, the defense attorney. And so he asked for a mistrial because, see, the thing is, is that racism mostly exists in the media, behind closed doors, and behind computer screens. Racism very rarely exists in a face-to-face -face manner. And the reason is, is because when you look into somebody's heart and somebody's eyes, and see even just a glimpse of their soul. Even if that's not something you believe you can do, it's a reality. And at that point, you realize that you're wrong. Your racism is wrong. And that has you have to either ignore that reality or you have to change your mind. And so that's why racism doesn't exist out in the open very often. It does, but not often and not at a high percentage. It, happens behind closed doors and it's because people understand and realize that it's wrong that no just as everyone knows the this uh, concept of not judging a book by its cover and so it's the same exact thing um, anyways I felt like that was a beautiful point or part of this movie you know, another interesting thing of nothing has changed. <laughs> you know how the riot started in the beginning, in the first place? An African-American 
young man was being beaten by cops and the crowd turned its attention towards saving the kid and then defending themselves. Nothing has changed. We seem to need to, as the United States, we seem, the government seems to need to exert authority anytime people start demanding their rights, the rights of an individual, to freedom of speech and freedom of expression, freedom of life. This movie was about several people stepping up and doing the right thing. Uh, it was an inspiring movie, and I enjoyed it. And it was full of inspiring people and people that I hope to maybe do more research on in the future. It's all time and uh, vibration. <laughs> I look forward to the next one. God bless you, my friends. I love you all.